I have a secret weapon when it comes to getting feedback from my web design clients where I can ask them specifically where they want changes all without them needing an account or a login to access that particular tool. And I also don't have to pay for it. (laughs) Are you curious what it is? I'm going to share it with you today. It's a quick walkthrough because it's a very simple tool. But before we dive into that, my name is Caitlin. I run Launch the Damn Thing. I am a Squarespace web designer and I am also an educator. (laughs) I love to teach people the types of tools and tech tips and online biz tips that I picked up along the way so that hopefully you don't fall flat on your face and fail upward like I have. (laughs) So on the note of saving both dollarinos and time, let's hop in so I can show you the tool and hopefully that'll help you get your projects done faster and easier. (laughs) All right, let's hop in. So today's tip for you is to look up markup. (laughs) I totally did not mean for that to rhyme. (laughs) I have been using markup for years and I haven't had to pay for it yet. There may come a time when that is necessary. They do have paid plans. But actually, I'm still on the free plan. And I, like I said, I've used this for years. So the way it works is uh, I have a Chrome extension that allows it to take screenshots of my screen so that when I leave comments, it will take a picture of the way that I see it on my end so that when they see my comment on their end, they can see what I am looking at more accurately. (laughs) So... You can dive into their features and everything, but I'm going to show you how I actually use it on the back end. So on the free plan, you have a limited number of markups is what they are calling this that you can have in your workspace at any given time. I have a few in here left over from past projects just so I can show you what this example looks like with things already in here and also to show you that you can use this with websites, with images or graphic files, videos, audio, all kinds of stuff. So how it actually works with Squarespace drafts, which is very important here, right? Because by the time we're asking for revisions, the website isn't live yet. Anybody that's used Squarespace before for any amount of time knows that you can't publish a trial site for sharing purposes. You have to assign it a password. So that's what I've done. Over in my demo site, I have password protected it. I've given it a short password that I can type in over here. And all I need to do is grab the .com, everything before that, copy it to my clipboard, come over to my markup, and then using this URL browser (laughs) search bar, I'm going to paste that in here. And I am going to follow that with question mark, password equals. That is a format for how to tell the browser what to type in when it asks for a password for the page. And then I'm going to type in whatever the password is that I set. In this case, I did draft. So if I click go, it's going to pull up the demo site and enter the password so that it will act like it is published. (laughs) So if you click on the markup, you open it in a new markup window. So the two options are comment mode or browse mode. Browse mode will literally let you use the website, scroll through it, see all the animations, click on buttons that take people to other places when this is an actual working website. It's not. (laughs) Uh, So you can click around and look at everything, see how it all works. And when you're wanting to leave a comment, as the client would, you'd switch over to comment mode and then you get a different cursor. That cursor is a pin, (laughs) a way to literally pin the comments on the screen where they want to to leave the feedback. So if they want this button to say something different besides contact us, like um, email us, then they can tell you what they want to happen here in this kind of text formatting bar. They can add uh, attachments, videos, emojis, and then they can post the comment here in the markup. So what happens is as the owner of the markup, I will see all of the active comments coming in and I will be able to click on them, 
and it will take me to the page where that comment is and scroll down to it so that I can find it very easily. So for example, if we switch back to browse mode and we go to the blog and we scroll down, I think I have a, yeah, there we go. So let's switch back to comment mode and let's pretend like I want to change the title of this post, change title to meet the author sure why not and let's leave a comment that says I think I named him Devin why that's sticking in my head I don't know <laughs> okay so now I have a few different comments over here in the sidebar as the host or the owner of this markup, I'll be able to look through and say, okay, I've got three requests for feedback. One of them is on the contact page and two of them are on the blog page and they are all collapsible so I can go page by page through all of the content. That keeps me on the same page, making the, same, the edits to that page without bouncing all over the place and wasting time, which is wonderful. But also, and I go click on that task, notice how it redirected me to the contact page and it slid down the page to show me where that pin actually was. And I can see the screenshot for when it was pinned so I can guess better, more accurately, what was trying to be targeted. If for some reason the client uses this to pin a revision request to something that's hidden, like the inside of an accordion, it will tell you that. <laughs> So it says pin to a hidden comment. You can kind of guess, click around in browse mode, and you can usually find it pretty easily. But not only that, when I've come in here and I've adjusted the thing, I can click this little check mark to resolve the comment. So that tells the client who, if they toggled on email notifications, which I typically do before I invite people, um, that will send them an email that says, hey, that comment's resolved. <laughs> So they know, and they can also switch over here to see all of the comments that have been resolved. In the actual comments too, there are threaded replies. So if I have a clarification question to ask, um, or if they asked me a question and I just want to answer and there's no actual change necessary, which happens sometimes, um, there's a whole thread that we can have based on this one pinned comment, which is awesome. So that's the gist of how it's actually used back and forth. You can also search through the comments. You can filter and reorder them. You can also preview the design in desktop, tablet, or mobile view, and any pinned comments that are done in those alternate views are pinned within that view, and they will show little notification icons up here. So for example, if I said, I want to switch that photo and then upload one, right? So I could just click that, drag a file in here and add a new one. That would tell the designer, hey, actually, I'm not loving the way that photo looks. Let's swap it out with something else and go ahead and give them the art, the design file for that. So if I posted that, notice that there's now a notification icon on the mobile version only because that's where I pinned it. So that's a little bit of a hiccup because sometimes uh, it doesn't translate and I have to question, do they actually want that change only on mobile or were they just looking at mobile when they made it? But it doesn't happen all that often and I can usually clarify. So it's a little bit of a hiccup, but just something to be aware of. Easy to work around though. So you can also hide and show the menu bar over here. And like I showed you earlier, you can set your notifications for whatever you show in here. You can also decide to show pins in browse mode. So even when you switch, you can see where the comments are. So that's how to use it. Everything that basically they offer, which is not a lot, but it's a powerful, not a lot. So when you're ready to send this to a client, it's actually pretty easy. You can actually open the markup just like this and click share. You can send it directly to their email address by typing that in here and clicking send. This will send an email to their address from markups email. <laughs> so you kind of have to warn them what it is and when it's coming. Uh, or you can actually give them the share link. And that just says anyone with the link access can access. <laughs> so if you give the link to them, then you can kind of control how they feel about it. You can give them uh, that link with a loom video that walks them through how to use it, which I often do. I'll make just a five minute video on how to use markup with me. 
And so that's the easy way. You've got it pulled open already. Just click share. And when they're in here too, it will actually ask them to give their name and their email address so that it can send notifications to the email address and title their comments with their name. So it's just a way to attribute their comments and to send them notifications. If I've replied to a comment, if I have left pins, pinned comment reminders on here on my own for them specifically, if I've tagged or mentioned them in a comment or a reply, those kinds of things. So it's not an actual account. It's just a guest access because there's no login required, no payment for either party. It's awesome. So that's one way you can share. The other way you can share is from your main markup workspace. And you can have multiple workspaces if you have a paid plan. On the free plan, you're only allowed one, which I mean, that's more than enough for me. So from here, you can actually access that same share menu right from your dashboard area and the same options apply. So you can actually access the share menu from inside or outside your client's markup. And when you're done, all you have to do is click the ellipsis up here at the top and delete when you no longer want the markup because you do have a limit on how many active ones you can have at one time. So if you check this box and we click delete, it will delete the markup that we just had and all the comments, so you gotta be careful. <laughs> The other way to have markups in here are with uh, images. So this is a branding markup that I had with a recent client. And you can see that there are multiple files over here on the right. So if you want to create a markup that is just images, note down here what images are supported or what file formats are supported. There's a long list and it's surprising. JPEGs, PNG, SVG, GIF, PDF, PSD, AI, EPS, TIFF, MP4, WMV, AVI, and MOV. I mean, that's like basically everything, right? <laughs> so if you click that and drag and drop your files in, you can upload them to a markup and they will kind of stack in there like we saw with this one. So multiple pages, right? So if we open this ridiculous GIF that I made for myself <laughs> with one of my favorite books by Laura Belgray, um, we have the ability to leave a comment and say like, hey, actually we need to re-record, re-record and move slower. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So there we go. That's how you can use markup with your clients for free very easily and get all of the personalized and pinned feedback for your website. So I hope that today's video was helpful for you. I really would love to be able to see more people using this for website and other design markups. Ha <laughs> ha because it's such a budget efficient, time efficient solution. Your clients won't need a login. That's the biggest piece of this. It's easy to share access to it. I mean, I have no complaints. <laughs> so go check it out. It's markup.io and they do have paid plans. But like I said, I've been using it on the free plan for years. So I encourage you to go check it out. No, I'm not an affiliate. They are not sponsoring this video. I just think it's a really badass tool for web designers and other designers. <laughs> So I hope that was helpful for you. I will see you in the next video. Bye.